Alrighty, hello everybody. Welcome to a new video. I am going to be playing with trying to clean up this lovely antique iron I had picked up just before quarantine started. Um, it has a lot of rust. It, What you're seeing isn't especially just my lighting. It actually is kind of on the orange side. So we're going to try a couple different methods. I did try some of the fancy purpose-made, um, what is it, blemish clarifier for cast iron products. Um, it didn't really do much long term. Uh, or, yeah, it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. It didn't really penetrate this. So we are going back to the good old fashioned sea salt and mineral oil that I use on my cast iron skillets. Um, you know, it's slightly a departure from my normal content where we're sewing and doing historical costuming. But I actually did want to do an experiment where I used this iron and tried ironing as they did all the way up until we got electric. So that is where we are at. We're going to try rubbing this down with some stuff, see if I can rehydrate the metal and get some of this rust knocked off. And we'll do another part in the series, if I can get this clean, where I actually put it on a hot plate and attempt to iron some scrap linen just to kind of see how it works. All right, I adjusted the lighting in here a bit to try and show a little bit more true on the camera what kind of rust we've got going here. So when it comes to cast iron, you you'd never want to put it in the dishwasher, right? So because that is essentially what this is, I'm going to try cleaning it the same way. We've got some mineral oil, which I just get this at Ikea because it comes in a nice big bottle. Um, if you start using more vegetable-based oils, you kind of have to get careful. Um, olive oil can start to turn caustic if it gets really hot. So, historically, I'm sure olive oil or lard or something else could have been used for this, but we're going to try going with the mineral oil because it's here. And I know that it's worked on my cast iron skillet before. But one kind of plus side where, so I just scattered a bunch of salt and some mineral oil on here and we're going to use the salt as an abrasive. Anyway, I had to restart. So with this, vegetable oils can cause smoking if they're at really high temperatures. Olive oil is especially bad for that. So we're using this and... One of the awesome things about this, especially right now with everybody washing their hands so much, it's going to make my hands really soft and kind of make up for a lot of the abuse I've been putting them through with all the hand, extra hand washing. Um, if I'd had it on hand, I probably would have tried using a thicker salt first or a coarser salt and then moving down towards this finer salt on maybe a second go. Sort of like if I was using sandpaper, just to help me get some of the divots off. Um, overall, I thought this was a super exciting little iron. And we're gonna have some fun with this you a whole bunch of time of me like speed cleaning this.
Alrighty, friends. So the update on our iron. This was after it sat for the majority of the day. Coated in salt and some mineral oil. It knocked off a ton of dirt. You, the remaining stuff is barely on this rag or on the paper towels I've already thrown out. So I removed a ton of dirt. As you can see, we have still got a pretty decent layer of rust on here. So we're going to give this one more once over with a little non-scratch pad. If I had them, I would be using steel wool. But we'll give this a go, see if I can get some more, and we'll kind of let it soak in some more oil overnight and see what else we can get off of this when I get off of work tomorrow. All right, friends. So I've been trying for the better part of a week to get this thing cleaned using salt scrubs, using steel wool, brushes, um, mineral oil, you know, the normal things I would use on cast iron cookware. And I've given up because the iron or the rust has penetrated so incredibly deep. So with a little bit of research, I found this uh, chemical rust remover that is designed for cast iron cookware. So hopefully when this heats up again someday, I don't have a bunch of chemicals going airborne when I use this iron again. But it's clearly doing something. So that liquid started off as a really pale yellowy green, which color correction is probably going to have to be used to make that come out, but I spilled some on this towel. And now it is, I'm going to call that russet. Um, tawny? I don't know if we're using 16th century color terms, I'm going to call that tawny. Um, the rust remover says to let it soak in that for anywhere from 1 to 12 hours, depending on the severity of the rust. I'm going to let it sit until at least right before I go to bed, so that kind of hits right in the middle. And we'll see what kind of progress we make. Um, we're supposed to be able to just rinse it off and let it dry, and then be able to heat it up and use it as if I were using this as cookware. So, we'll see. Okay everybody, we are coming to you from my bathroom sinks. So I got the iron out after nine, ten hours in the bath of, uh, that's the chemical we used, evapro rust. Evapo rust. Anyway, look at how awesome this is. There, the rust is like night and day. It is still there. Um, I have destroyed all of my wire brushes over the last couple weeks trying to get this thing clean. So, there we go. Focus. I need to go out to the hardware store tomorrow and grab a new wire brush. And give this thing one more once over. Maybe stick it in a vinegar bath like some of my metalworking friends just suggested to me earlier today. And let it do a little more soaking in that, but we are almost there. I mean, how awesome is this? Oh, watch the light autocorrect. You can actually see some, like, maker's marks. There's a cool star under there that I'm not sure I really could see before. Um... Apparently the handle is made out of something that almost looks like rebar, which I thought was just flaked off damaged metal. So Yeah, take a look at how awesome this is. So, super happy with our progress finally. That was an awesome amount of progress for almost no effort. Yay, making my millennial self happy. But... We are going to let this be for the night. Um, I'm going to go to the store, get steel wool, get some more wire brushes. We'll hit that with those tomorrow 
after it's had a chance to do another round of baking in the oven to try and get rid of or deal with some of the extra rust that's sitting here. So that's what I have. Thanks guys. Okay, so it has been a journey to get this thing cleaned up, but I think we are finally there. Um, it has sat in that rust remover for nine, ten hours yesterday, and when I woke up, it still had a little bit of rust on there. So we put it into some vinegar at the suggestion of a couple of my metalworking friends. You can see that rust is just coming right off. So I'm going to rinse this bad boy. We've still got just a tiny bit left and it looks like that's more stuff that's down in some grooves and some pores on the metal. So I'm going to go back to using some of that soft scrub basically that I made out of salt and mineral oil. Um, that doesn't want to come out. So let's grab a spoon. But we've also scrubbed it pretty thoroughly with a wire brush to get more of the stuff out as well as um, some steel wool. So this should all just be a little bit of superficial steam. I'm going to put one of these bad boys down to help keep my counter clean. This is going to help clean off what is left on here. I hope you guys have been enjoying watching my random, I don't know, antique restoration video. I can't say this is really what... Most of my folks are here for, so thank you. I just thought somebody out there might find it interesting to see me try to restore this so we can get back to some historical sewing adventures as the intrepid Ms. Um, Bernadette Banner puts it, some experiments. I really wanted to try and do some of the original practice tools such as this iron. Hi, traffic noise. But in order to have it effectively do that, we need it to clean it first. All right. So, there we go. It probably looks very much the same as it did in one of those first clips. But we should be good. like there's some more of that that still hasn't come up. I'm going to go grab that wire brush of mine again. We'll hit it one more time with that. And we're going to do some seasoning and throw it in the stove, which is heating up right now.
so I don't know if you guys can see this terribly well. Let's see if I can get it to focus. We have gotten the rust off. Look at all this. There's tiny bits because it's trying to oxidize and rust in my hands as I'm letting it sit, but we've got all of the deep penetrating rust out of this. We've got a lot of the big scale that we had from years of old season and such off. But like my friend Travis was telling me, now that it's down to bare metal, it's going to start to try and rust almost instantly. So we need to get this coated in some oil and start trying to recure the iron. So I'm just going to use mineral oil. That way I don't have to worry about some of the issues you have with olive oil, where if it gets hot, it's going to start to release um, carcinogens. So. And this is just basic stuff you get at Ikea. I use it on my cutting boards. And I also use it on my cast iron cookware. That first layer is going to go on about as thick as I can get it. You can start to see it's already stopped oxidizing. It's no longer turning red on us. But I want to try and get as much of this into the little grooves. Think of it as lotion for your cast iron pieces, right? that, we are going to go and throw it into the hottest setting I could function on my oven. Some people have a self-cleaning section. I just cranked mine up to 500 degrees. And we're going to let this cook for an hour, maybe two, and then turn off the heat and let it cool off with the oven itself. But I'm not going to bore you guys with watching two hours of oven with a light might get like a five second clip. I just realized I've lived here for three years and never wanted an oven light until now. But there we go. It's time to close up the oven and let the heat do its magic to that iron. All right, so editing Meredith here. I honestly couldn't tell you what happened to the outro in the last couple months when I've been off dealing with work, but the iron is complete. I did not destroy it as I realized how dark my clothing is compared to this iron. So I love it. I ended up doing probably three cures. It was either three or four cures where I put on some mineral oil, put it in the hot oven, let it bake for an hour and cool off completely over the course of three days. So basically I would come home after work, set this thing to what I needed it to do, go make myself a salad and go from there. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but it is an upcoming project and video. So I, I will be super excited to share that with you. If you're watching this before Halloween, happy Halloween. I'm hoping I get this up before Halloween. If not, it'll probably be the week after and you'll have some other fun, spooky Halloween content. In the meantime, thank you to my friends, Travis and Elric for all of your helpful advice, trying to get the rust off of here. You're amazing metal workers and Honestly, your thoughts and advice made the difference in this project. I would also like to welcome all of you new subscribers. While I've been off doing work stuff, there's a whole bunch more of you. I think the viewership is doubled. So welcome to the party. Hopefully this video doesn't bore you, but there will be more fun sewing content with this iron once we get back into the swing of it. 
in the meantime, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye.